Hello and welcome to the Oxford Online Maths Club, episode one. Uh, my name's James, I'm the admissions coordinator for maths at Oxford, um, and I'm joined today in chat by Lauren and Christian again. They're current Oxford students, um, and they're here to talk to people about what's, uh, what's going on today. You can talk to them about maths or talk to them about anything else that's going on today, um, and you should also be able to talk to other people as well, now that I've turned that on. Um, that's over in the live chat, which is hosted on slido.com. If you go to slido.com slash OOMC, then you can join this chat, which is scrolling below. Very quick shout outs to people on screen at the moment. Hi to Lucinda, hi Hafiz, hi Maya, uh, who's very excited, how Karen, um, and hi anonymous person down there as well. Okay. Um, Coming up today, um, I'd like to show you some cubes and some other shapes. I've been getting art and crafty and I've been making things and I'd like to show you what I've been making. Um, I hope that's okay. Okay, so we've got some arts and crafts uh, and then after that um, I'd like to show you an infinite YouTube series that comes from playing YouTube videos faster and faster and faster. Um, so I'd like to show you that and try and link it to university maths. Um, I'd like to try and show you what that what's going on there. Okay, so that's that's the plan. Uh, filling out the hour around to half past five. If we've got if we've got time at the end, we'll do some Q and A uh, coming up at the end. Um, and that's the plan for today. Slightly less content than last week after I realised I'd crammed too much content in here. And to answer the question that's just come up uh, on screen and then instantly disappeared as people started saying hello, hi to Lid, Sophie, Peggy and Kestero. I can't say that. Um, somebody asked, um, when are we going to have guests? I am working out how to get guests on. Um, I'm trying, I'm planning some guests. Uh, the plan is that we have current students on as guests at some point. Um, yeah, we're working it out. Okay, right, great. Okay, um, that's my plan for today. Um, at the moment, we've got Lauren and Christian as sort of guests who are here in chat only. Um, say hi to Lauren and Christian in the chat. Right, okay. Um, let me show you what I've been working on. I need to switch to. Here we go. This is new. Um, this is this is my desk. Um, okay, so. Here's my art and craft project. Um, here's a shape that I've made. Um, I'd like to tell you about this shape. Um, it might not be, uh, might not look like much at the moment, but we're going to try and work out the kind of properties of this shape that I've got on the desk here. It, it's a cube, um, so perhaps not the most exciting shape in the world. And you can see I've drawn a, I've drawn a straight line across the middle of of one of the sides. Um, in fact, I've drawn a, I've drawn a straight line on all of the sides of this cube um, and there are different ways to do that. Okay, So I haven't shown you the other, the other sides yet but try and imagine drawing a line across the middle of each side of a cube. Um, different ways to do that. You could continue this line around here um, but then the question is what do you do on the other side if you want to make this make this look nice. So kind of joining up the lines feels a little bit like you end up with special sides. So I haven't done that. I haven't joined up the lines. What I've done instead is I've got all of the lines at right angles to each other as you go across edges. Okay, so this is the shape that I've got. Um, it's a cube, but I've drawn these lines on the side so that none of them match up. They're all at right angles to each other. Okay, um, grand. Okay, so might not might not look like much yet, but we're gonna try and explore the properties of this shape. Okay. Um, so something mathematicians are sometimes interested in when you show them new shapes um, is the symmetries of that shape, which, which here I'm going to think about today, I'm just going to think about rotations. I'm going to think about different rotations you can do to take this shape and to do some sort of rotation to get it back to where it started. So that's not quite the same as rotating the cube because I want to respect these lines that I've drawn on the sides. Um, okay, so for example, here's a rotation, here's a symmetry of the cube. I can rotate it by 180 degrees, and I'll get back to where I started. Um, all the other lines um, have gone round, gone round, and got got round to somewhere similar to where they started. Looks just the same as when it started. I guess it's a pretty boring one. Um, I guess I could rotate it by 180 degrees around this side, um, or around this side. There's some other rotations that I can do. There are other more interesting ro rotations I can do. Um, I could rotate it, a sort of combination of rotations. I could do a sort of 90 degree rotation that way, and then 90 degrees that way. 
Okay, so that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Um, said differently, I think that's equivalent to a 120 degree rotation around one of the corners. If you look down on the corner, by the way, you can see that these lines, the way I've drawn them so that none of them match up, kind of spiral outwards and clockwise um, around that corner. But if you look at this corner, they kind of spiral outwards and anti-clockwise. So somehow the corners, the corners aren't quite the same as each other, which is a little bit surprising. Why aren't they the same? Everything else is kind of symmetric between the two sides. Um, so that's, that's a little bit surprising. Um, and it's these rotations which might not seem like much. So it's not quite the same as rotating a cube because you need to respect all of these straight lines. It's those symmetries that I'd like to try and understand. This is sort of the, the, the simplest example of a shape that has these rotations that I'm interested in right now. Maybe not, uh, maybe not quite the simplest shape. I'm, if I'm ignoring your question, it's because I've kind of planned how I'm going to do the next 10 minutes of, of talking and I can see your questions coming in and I'll get, get to them at the next break. Okay, well, I've kind of planned the next 10 minutes of talking. I'm going to address Joel. Joel says, it's interesting to think about the net of this cube. Ooh, interesting idea, Joel. It's almost like you knew that I had a net ready. Um, so it's interesting to think about the net of this cube. Um, uh, here's the net of the cube. Uh, is that showing well? There we go. I wonder if that's in focus. Uh, let's try and focus this. Okay, so here's the net of the cube, um, where I think the net makes it clearer how, as you move from one side to the other, you rotate the you rotate the side. Okay, so we have this straight line on one side, and then as you cross over to to the next side, the line's the other way around. Okay, uh, and somehow if you fold this up, you get this nice cube with lines on that has this property of this this strange set of rotations where not every rotation of the cube is allowed, only some of the rotations of the cube are allowed. Here's my plan. I'm going to draw something else on the sides of this cube. I'm going to draw a network of edges or a picture or something like that. Um, and I'm going to draw that on the cube, kind of respecting the way that the sides of the cube behave. Um, and I'm going to see what we get when we fold it up. Okay, that probably doesn't make sense out loud, but luckily I'm about to do it and show you what I mean. Okay, um, so um, here's my plan. Um, I'm going to draw, maybe I'll start at the top, and I'll draw in this square something that has, I suppose I want it to have rotational symmetry by 180 degrees. Um, whatever I draw in here, so that when I spin the cube around by 180 degrees in a minute, it will have that symmetry. Okay, um, so I want 180 degree rotation. I need to think a little bit. If I draw stuff over here, it's going to match up with this edge over here. So I need to think about matching it up. Um, here's what I want to draw. I want to draw a line coming in this way. Uh, and then I'm going to draw, so I've got to do rotational symmetry. So I'll rotate that over here. Okay. Um, and I'll draw a line in here, joining it to this corner. Line out that side. And a line down the middle. Okay, that's my plan. That's a shape that has rotational, that's a picture that has rotational symmetry by 180 degrees. Um, so we could look at this and think about, we could draw this on all of the sides of the cube, remembering that on these ones, I want to draw it this way around, but then on these two, I want to draw it rotated by 90 degrees. Okay, so this is my, this is my shape, it's got 180 degree rotation symmetry, so I'm going to draw it again over here, uh, and I'm going to draw it again over here for this side. Oh. And the question is going to be, what happens when I fold this up? What shape do I get or what structure do I get in the network of lines that I'm drawing? Um, I suppose I'll get some new shape or new picture of edges that has the same sort of symmetries that we, just look, we were just looking at, of rotations of this cube with the lines on it that don't match up. Okay, so in this one, this one's 90 degrees out, so I need to draw it, I need to draw my shape this way round. Okay. Uh, and 
over here as well. So I suppose really this one is this one is 180 degrees out from this one because it's crossed over twice. Um, but uh, my shape's got 180 degree rotational symmetry, so that's fine. It's just the I can draw this as the same as that one. Okay. Um, so I've drawn my drawn my pattern um, because my shape has 180 degree rotational symmetry, just like this line does. This should end up with the same set of symmetries as this this cube model did before. Okay, so I need to cut this out and fold it up to make a cube. Um, here's my blue Peter mo bit blue Peter moment. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, do you want? Yeah, someone in chat. Um, how it here says it's sort of pattern. Yeah, there's something going on there, isn't there? There's something quite nice about this pattern just on flat space. Um, when I fold it up, okay, here's one I made earlier. Uh, so if I fold it up, I get this. Okay, so let's play with this shape. So I've generated this um, this cube in a kind of in that similar way, right? That I took one side, and then on the adjacent sides, as you go over the edge, I've rotated it by 90 degrees. I've made sure that my shape here on the top has 180 degree rotational symmetry, so that when I get round to the the other side, it matches up. Okay, so symmetries of this thing. Well, I mean, obviously we can rotate at 180 degrees because. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the symmetries that I gave it when I drew this on just on this side. Um, but there's some interesting stuff going on here that, um, you know, I can rotate it 90 degrees and then round by 90 degrees. I suppose the interesting thing is to look at this network of edges that I've got and to start to think about this as, you know, maybe we could ignore the fold lines, ignore the edges of the cube and think what's going on What's going on with this shape? Yeah, so people in chat saying uh, turtle shell pattern. Um, are they hexagons or are they pentagons? Uh, Jake says it's pentagonal looking. Um, it's a bit like the pattern on a football, I suppose. Footballs have pentagons on them. Um, and it's from Jake Stewart said, haha, it's like the real Jake Stewart. Um, people in chat are working out, you can set your username to anything you like in Slido chat. So don't take anyone at face value, uh, not even me. Right, um, okay, so some sort, of, some sort of pattern going on here. I think these are pentagons once I folded them up. Um, let me justify that. So this shape here, if I ignore the fold line, I think that's a pentagon. It's got, it's got a corner here. It's got a corner here and here. And then it's got two more corners that are, I mean, they, they happen to line up with the corners of the cube. Um, but that's five corners overall. So I think that's a pentagon. In fact, I think all of these are pentagons. I think I've got 12 pentagons that fit together into this kind of dodecahedron pattern. In fact, the network of edges that I get out of, out of doing this, so just taking this basic unit and sticking it to the sides of the cube, out by 90 degrees every time you go across an edge, um, gives me the edge network of a dodecahedron. So this is sort of like taking a, um, sort of like taking a dodecahedron I'm saying dodecahedron a lot, and I haven't defined it. It's like taking this um, this this uh, platonic solid, this twelve twelve faced um, shape. Where the faces are all regular pentagons. And I guess that's not what this is because these are not regular pentagons. Um, but the the idea of a dodecahedron is that it's um, five pentagons meeting at each point. Sorry, three pentagons meeting at each point. Um, and that's what I've got here. So this kind of network of edges is the same as a dodecahedron. I was saying it's a bit like. Um, smushing down a, a dodecahedron onto a cube um, or oh, anonymous in chat no Maya says if you made it into a sphere so yeah if you inflated it if you pumped it up uh, and inflated it outwards then you might you could maybe make this perfectly regular there's some sort of uh, transformation you could do to round out the sides of it um, I like to think of this as like um, you know those uh, vinyl figures for cartoon characters you can buy them in comic book shops um, and they take they take all of the cartoon characters from a TV show or something, and they and they make them into these vinyl figures that have uh, square heads. Um, I like to think if you had to make a dodecahedron into a Funko Pop, then this is probably the best way to do it. This is probably the best way to squash a dodecahedron down onto a cube. Okay, um, so the reason it works nicely, I suppose, is that. The rotations of a dodecahedron, which is a really complicated thing to think about, by the way, the, the ways to rotate a dodecahedron and get back to where you started, um, they include, as a subset, these rotations of this shape, the, the cube with lines on, um, as a subset. 
um, the rules are you can rotate by 180 degrees. Um, so you can rotate by 180 degrees around this side if you want to. Um, or you can rotate by 90 degrees so long as you then do another 90 degree rotation. Um, and it's not obvious, I think, if you look at a dodecahedron, that it's got those symmetries hiding in it. Um, but because it does, um, you can squash it down onto a cube uh, and get something nice like this. Cool, okay. Um, someone says it's a nice way to ca ca calculate the surface area. Unfortunately, the, the surface area is changed a bit by, by the squashing process. Um, so if you start with a dodecahedron and you squash it down onto a cube, then unfortunately that, that messes up um, that messes up the, the surface area a bit. The squashing's not quite uniform in some sense. Okay, um, this is an arts and crafts section though. Um, part of the fun of this is to work out, you know, I picked, I picked one particular network of edges to draw on one side of the cube. Um, and it turns out that together with the context of we're going to take this and paste it onto the sides of the cube, um, you can make something that resembles a dodecahedron. Um, so you can take something that looks like a looks a bit like a dodecahedron. Um, part of the fun of this is to try and make one yourself and to see what else you can make. Um, I've got another one that I made earlier, um, which I'll show you in a moment. But I want to talk about the, the kind of challenge of it, I suppose, which is I've shown you a dodecahedron. Um, that's one of five what are called platonic solids, um, I suppose a challenge would be, can you make the other platonic solids like this? Um, is there something you can draw on the sides of the cube that satisfies this same idea about taking that picture you draw on one side of the cube, rotating it by 90 degrees and sticking it on the side, rotating it by 90 degrees and sticking it on this side, um, that gives you um, a... Uh, a something else like a, an icosahedron or an octahedron or a tetrahedron or a, or a cube. Those are the platonic solids. I suppose a cube is easy. Um, a cube you would draw um, a square around the outside of this side to say I want the edges of this shape to be the edges of the cube and then when you fold it up you get oh you get a nice nicely outlined cube. So maybe a cube is too easy. Um, uh, but there's other there's a way to make the other platonic solids and if that's too easy for you if you want more of a challenge um, you can uh, make uh, you can have a go at trying to make the I think Archimedean solids uh, solids as well. Um, Raphael in chat asks, would what's this two triangles coming in? Um, so yeah, interesting question. So um, so if you draw um, if your glyph I don't know, I say glyph. Um, I'm trying to look for a word that's sort of like network of edges or symbol or shape here. Um, if your glyph is something like this, like a big X, then you get a shape which has, um, if these are the edges, and you draw this on each side of a cube, then you get a shape which has, I guess, 12 faces in some sense. There are, each face is folded over the sides of a cube, like this dodecahedron model. Um, 12 faces, they're all quadrilaterals. Um, that is a shape. Um, I mean, it, that, there is a corresponding 3D shape with flat surfaces. Um, it's not a platonic solid. Um, but yeah, that, you can generate things not just platonic solids. I, I, it's probably time for me to show you um, this uh, other thing I've made. Yeah, chat, chat approval is faster now because I've got Lauren and Christian around to also approve chat. In the old days of the Matt live stream, you had to, um, you had to wait for me to look over at chat and approve your message. Right, cool. Um, okay, right. Um, here's one I made earlier. I want to show you. So I've coloured this one in. Um, here's the glyph on the top. Um, so I've drawn a, I've drawn a square, uh, slightly off by some angle, and I've put triangles in the corners, um, and long skinny triangles on the sides of the square. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm saying glyph like hieroglyphics. I sort of, when I when I look at this, I sort of think like this could be like a hieroglyphic symbol or something, but it's not. I should stop saying glyph. Okay, um, so I've drawn this. Have a, mo have a moment to imagine what this will look like when I spin it around. Um, this one I like because it's got, um, it's got rotational symmetry by 180 degrees, which is something I said it had to have. Um, and it's also got this rule that um, 
It, it, it doesn't, okay, so this particular one doesn't have uh, any reflection or symmetry. I guess because I've coloured it in. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, so if I spin this round, you can see that um, there's the other sides, which have also got this uh, square on. Um, so there's this thing about as you go, again, as you go over the sides, this one's got pink in these corners, and then this one's got pink in those corners. I've rotated it by 90 degrees. That's helpful because it means that the pink bits join up as you go around here. This shape on the corner there is a triangle, even looks like a triangle. Sometimes you do these things and you have to stare at it a bit and sort of imagine topologically what shape is this, how many corners has it got. Um, a bit like how we looked at this one and thought, is that a pentagon really? Um, okay, um, so here's this. It's kind of got these these squares on that don't quite don't quite touch and some triangles in between Four of the triangles are pink and four of the triangles are blue. And then in between those, there's this mesh network of lilac and purple long skinny triangles. Um, the edge network of this shape corresponds to a really interesting Archimedean solid. And I think I'll leave it as homework for you to work out what this is. I guess part of the homework there is to uh, come up with symbols to draw on the sides to make all of the Archimedean solids. This is my solution for one of them, uh, and I think it's one of the most interesting Archimedean solids. Okay, right, cool, okay. Um, so that's, that's, I suppose, homework in some sense to have a go at making one of these. Um, let's do the rules one more time. Um, I'll go through the rules one, one, more, time in, one more time in a moment. Um, have a go at making one of these. Try and make platonic solids, try and make Archimedean solids. Um, I'll put links to platonic solids and Archimedean solids. I don't really expect anyone to know what, what the list of Archimedean solids is. Um, there's a list on Wikipedia of what all the Archimedean solids are. I had to look it up to make sure that this homework was possible. Um, right, let's talk about the rules again. Um, so the shape that you draw needs to have rotational symmetry by 180 degrees. Um, one of the rules. So you need rotational symmetry by 180 degrees. Okay, I'm being a bit sloppy with my data. Oh, you really can't read that, can you? Okay, uh, rotational symmetry by 180 degrees. And if you want points to join up on the edges, if you want points, if you want edges to join up, Um, you need top edge to match the left edge, um, reading across and down. Um, okay, so what I mean by this is um, to make sure this matches up, as I look over to here, I needed to make sure that this top edge reading left to right matches up with this edge reading down here. I guess I got away with it a little bit here because I, I drew an edge in to separate out this dark purple triangle from this lilac triangle. Um, okay, um, right. It's not a truncated cube. I think it might be a snub cube. I've actually forgotten the name. Part of the reason that I didn't tell you the name of this shape is I forgot which one it was. I think it might be a snub cube. Um, it's got a kind of, it's, it's an interesting shape in a way because it's got, um, it's got a kind of handedness to it. Um, he says, showing you his hands. Um, it's got a kind of handedness to it because I could have put this square kind of rotated the other way. Um, if you take the mirror image of this shape, then you sort of don't quite get the same thing uh, in a way that's not true. If you take the mirror image of the dodecahedron model, then you get a dodecahedron model. Okay, um, lots more admissions questions coming in. Probably time to do some admissions Q&A in a minute, if that's all right. Um, yeah, I think that's my plan now. As we, as we come up to five o'clock, I think, yeah, I think my snub cube. I agree with Elizabeth and other people telling me about snub cubes. If you've opened the list of Archimedean solids and you're looking at which one this is, then thanks for letting me know about snub cubes again. I did do my homework preparing for this, but then I forgot. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> lovely, right, okay. Here's the plan. We're going to close that. Uh, we're going to have a look at some uh, admissions questions that are coming in. Um, I'm going to switch to uh, an ad break while we look at some admissions questions um yeah sorry um here's the here's the ad break um there you go you can have a go at that while we look at some admissions questions um let's have a quick look 
Um, are all symbols that have rotational symmetry of 180 degrees the same as if you did point symmetry? I can't remember what point symmetry is. That's not a, a missions question either. Sorry, Maya, I don't know. Um, are they all the same? I think it's hard to prove that the two of these are the same without actually drawing them and checking that they're the same. Uh, right, okay, let's have a quick look at things I was uh, missing. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Grant Sanderson, or someone pretending to be Grant Sanderson, turned up again. Um, I'm not sure. Do I, do I have any tips for revising A level maths and further maths? Um, from Megan um, over there. So, tips for revising these, I think practice doing tricky problems, practice doing things that you can't do straight away. Sometimes in A level, that's stuff right at the end of the of the of the past paper test um someone either being jake stewart or pretending to be jake stewart says can we enjoy the lecture rather than complaining or asking about the admissions process nope that's what we're doing now um da, 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 da. are interviews meant to be do you think interviews meant to be more this year meant more this year because most people scored highly on the mat um i'm not sure i think we still had some variation of mat score um w amongst people we shortlisted um uh, da, 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 da. Why did some people who get over 90 on the mat not even get shortlisted? Um, so this is a common question about why don't we shortlist everyone who does really, really well on the mat? Um, there are some candidates who, for complicated reasons, we expect to do extremely well on the mat. Um, and I don't want to comment on their individual applications. Uh, also, because they might be watching. Oh, I forgot to say, by the way, um, today's ad... Um, let me find the ad. Um, I forgot to tell you, today's ad is sponsored by Hexadecimal. 60% um, more digits than other available uh, decimal systems. Um, if you, if you uh, like decimal, then you could be getting 60% more digits for your buck. Uh, let me show you how to do this sum in hexadecimal. Um, so over here, 9 plus 9, now you might be thinking, I'm going to have to write an 8 and add the 1, um, but 9 plus 9 is 18, in, in hexadecimal, we write that as 16 plus 2. So we write down a 2, and we carry the 1. The 1 means 16 in hexadecimal. Um, you see, this is this is the efficiency of hexadecimal. We, you know, your decimal system would have got an 8 there, we, we only have to go up to 2. Um, okay, um, 9 plus 3 plus that carried 1, that means 16, coming in there, so that's 9 plus 3 plus 1 is, of course, E. Um, you see, this is the efficiency of hexadecimal. We get to use these extra extra digits as well. So after 8, 9, you get A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, and then 6 plus 7 is, of course, D. And you see, your normal decimal system would have overflowed into a, a fourth space, but the efficiency of hexadecimal is that you can fit that answer there into, into just three symbols. Slaps roof of decimal system. You can fit so many extra digits in here. In fact, this advert is written a little bit in, uh, written a little bit in decimal. I don't like this. I don't like this 60% more digits thing. No, no, no. In hexadecimal, we say 99.8% more digits. That's a bit of a slow one. <laughs> I'll take a moment. This is my idea of a joke, by the way. Um, so it's 99.A, which is a real brain scratcher. You've got to remember, percent in hexadecimal means something slightly different. It means parts per 256. Um, and 99.A, I'm using the fact that 3 over 5 is equal to 0 0.9999999 in hexadecimal. Um, that's right, in hexadecimal, 0 0.9999 is not equal to 1, it's equal to 3 over 5. Um, okay, nobody does percentages in hexadecimal. This is my idea of a joke. Right, okay, what's next? We've got like some actual serious content coming up, I can't remember. Um, oh yeah, okay, so that was that was a little bit of emissions and then a little bit of a little bit of a uh, little bit of chat, right. Ad break. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Right, okay, yes. Oh, next up. Ha, right, yeah, more content. Phew, right. Uh, more content, then we'll do some other stuff afterwards. Okay. Um, where are we going? Ah, yeah, okay. So, this is a problem I thought about recently. Um, so, stuck, stuck in lockdown, um, I don't know about you, but I've been watching the same YouTube videos uh, again and again and again. Um, I've sort of got my favourite YouTube videos, um, and I've been watching them... The thing you can do is, to sort of as you get familiar with a YouTube video, you can get faster and faster as you watch them. Uh, and there's a sort of question about if you watch a YouTube video again and again and again, faster and faster and faster, what happens? Now, you, you might be thinking, 
you know where this is going. Um, you might be thinking, ah, yes, double every time, geometric series, sum it up, get two. If you're thinking that, no, pay attention. It's going to be that, and then I'm going to put a twist on it. So pay attention. We're going to do the we're going to do the standard thing, and then we're going to do a different thing. So it's this phenomenon I saw that. Um, uh, people quite like this thing about watch a video and then watch it twice as fast. Um, so maybe let's say, maybe let's say first, uh, so we're going to watch, watch the same one hour video. Maybe it's this one. Watch the same one hour video over and over again. Um, first time we'll watch it at normal speed. So we'll watch it at, uh, first normal speed. Well, normal speed, that'll take us one hour. Uh, and then we'll watch it at double speed. Uh, that'll take us half an hour. Uh, then we'll double again. So four times speed. Um, and then we'll double again to get sort of eight times speed. And that'll only take us an eighth of an hour, which is such a short period of time. Nobody even really says eighth of an hour, do they? People say half an hour and quarter of an hour. Nobody ever says eighth of an hour. What's going on there? Um, okay, so maybe you've seen this before. This is a very famous sum. Um, this is, um, I claim, if you keep adding all of these up, um, then all of this added together is exactly equal to the number two. Why am I changing color to write two? Okay, right, two. Um, maybe you've seen this before. Maybe you've seen this in um, sort of popular culture, if not in a maths class. Um, I'm going to quickly try and prove that it's two, just in case people haven't seen this before. Um, let's have a quick look at chat, what's going on in chat. Mm -hmm. Links to favourite videos. Why are there so many spelling mistakes in Matt's specimen papers? <laughs> it's probably my fault, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this series converges to two. Let's try and prove that really quickly. Um, let's take this sum. Uh, so this sum, let's call it S or something. S for sum. Um, if we double s, uh, so if we double s, then we get 2 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter plus dot 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 dot. Okay, um, and that's equal to, well, that's exactly, there's a 2 at the front, and then all of this stuff is exactly what we said s was. So this is equal to s. So the, t the thing over here, if we double s, we get s plus 2. Okay, the only number I know which, when you double it, it gets bigger by 2. Um, s, uh, double s, you get s plus 2. I think that means that s has to be 2. There's a little bit of algebra there, isn't there? Sort of 2s equals s plus 2. That's quite a nice property that the number 2 has. Okay, right, so this is the number 2, which is quite nice. There's some sort of philosophy there about what, what does it actually mean to add up infinitely many terms in this sum? Goodness knows. Um, okay, right, this is two. This is the way the thing's normally told. Um, this is the kind of normal way of turning, you know, I'm aware of YouTube and playing videos faster and faster. Um, I suppose you could you could phrase this as sort of um, OOMC episode one, but every time the video ends, it gets twice as fast and starts again. I think that's a sort of concise video title that might generate for you uh, uh, this this series, uh, one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on. And the punchline I suppose is that if you play OOMC episode one, but every time the video ends it gets twice as fast and starts again, then the whole thing lasts two hours. Um, okay, by the way, this, this, um, this um, sum that we've done here Choose your favourite colour. Um, this sum that we've done here um, has got a name if you're in year 11. And shout out to the year 11s. I found out from the uh, newsletter signups that there are way more year 11s than I was expecting. Um, so shout out to all the year 11s. Let us know in chat if you're in year 11 or something. I don't know. How do shout outs work? Okay, shout out to year 11s. Um, this is in A level maths. Um, so this is in A level maths. This is called a geometric series. A good question to ask when you hear about this is what's it got to do with geometry? You were telling me about YouTube. This is called geometry, like geometry. What's going on there? Um, and that question is 
sort of answered in A-level, but sort of not. Maybe we'll talk about it on the Maths Club at some point. Um, okay, so geometric series. Um, the idea of a geometric series is you have a first term and then you have a sort of common ratio. Uh, and I sort of think that this is a way that, so a common ratio multiplied by a half, multiplied by a half, multiplied by half, da, 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 it, conver it converges, you add it all up. Um, okay, and you've basically seen, this is the almost the only facts that you learn about geometric series in A-level, so I've kind of spoiled that. Um, cool. Oh, sorry, anonymous. Um, you don't need to sign up. Um, if you want to get an email newsletter with further reading and more bits of maths every Friday, then you can sign up for a newsletter on the Maths Club homepage, which is down there yeah, in that link at the bottom. There is a, a website where you can sign up for an email newsletter. Um, there's an exchange. If you sign up for the email newsletter, then I get a little bit of, a little bit of data about who's watching. Um, and in exchange, you get sent more maths. Okay, what was I saying? Um, this is the normal way to turn... YouTube playing faster and faster into uh, a sort of maths puzzle. Um, and some of you might have been sort of snoozed through this one. Um, literally did this in maths today, lol, says someone in chat. Uh, Jake Stewart said, is it like geometric mean? Oh, it's not quite the same as geometric mean. It's kind of a, a different thing that's weirdly got geometric stamped on it as in its name. Uh, okay, um, I wanna show you a different way of turning this into a maths problem. I sort of think that this way of framing the problem is missing a trick. Um, it's missing a trick about how YouTube speed up actually works. So YouTube has, in YouTube, there are these options for playback speed. Um, so this is in YouTube, the, at the bottom of this video right now. Actually, I don't know if this is true on live videos. If you're watching this video back, then there's a, a playback speed option at the bottom um, and it's not just normal speed, double speed, four times speed, eight times speed. There's lots more options here. And um, there's 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. And then here are the fast ones, 1 1.25, 1 1.5, 1.75, and then two, just off the bottom of the screen. Aha, so this is slightly different. Um, so here's a sort of slightly different question. What if I wanted to play a video, oh hello, I'm way off the screen. What if I wanted to play a video at every YouTube playback speed? Okay, um, so I'm imagining here as well, there's this custom button up here, um, wrong color, uh, there's this custom button here that lets you choose other multiples of 0.25. So I'm imagining we play it at normal speed. Maybe we'll play it at a quarter speed first. We'll play it at a quarter speed and then half speed and then 0.75 speed and then normal speed and then 1.25 speed uh, and so on. Okay. I'm imagining you hack into the custom thing and you keep going up, um, up by just 0.25 each time. Okay. Um, so this has more more kind of granularity in the speeds than the previous sum that we thought about. In the previous sum, we kind of went from double speed up to four times speed, whereas my new plan, inspired by the actual YouTube playback speed options, is to go you know to go much more carefully, not to go to double speed and then to go to 2.25 speed. Um, Pay us. Why is it one over those numbers? Um, what I'm doing here is time, so I'm doing, I'm doing um, length of video, here's my little triangle, um, length of video, length of video um, divided is, length of video is speed times time. So I'm doing this kind of calculation like this. I want to work out time, so I need to do length divided by speed. Um, okay, so the, it's like the fractions over here where eight times speed means you divide one hour by eight. It only takes you one eighth of an hour. Okay, right, Peggy's on board. Okay, um, there's a 20 second stream delay, Peggy. I'm sorry, it'll look like I'm still explaining 20 seconds afterwards. Never mind. Um, okay. <laughs> it sort of gives me, it gives the impre false impression that I'm 20 seconds ahead of where people are. Right, okay. Um, so, yeah, okay. So this series is a bit like doing one over n over four says Jake in chat just below, just behind my face. Um, that's kind of true. Um, it's not quite that because, well, what about when n is 
one. Okay, yeah, no, it's sort of a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is It is that, isn't it? Okay, right, great, that's a good observation. Um, I'm going to write this like, yeah, so I'm going to write this out. Having written it like this, as a one-hour video divided by 0.25 divided by 0.5 divided by 0.75, 1, 1, 2, 5, and so on. Um, we're imagining that this keeps going, 1.5, 1.75, 1 over 2, 1 over 2.25, and so on. Yeah, okay. So if I bring out a factor of 1 over 4, then this is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5, which is another famous series. Now, I think some people... Some people in chat are already telling me that this diverges, which means that A, they know about divergence as a word, and B, they've maybe seen this before, or they're very quick at working things out. Um, for the people who haven't seen this before, which is kind of why we're doing this, right? Um, for the people who haven't seen this before, this is a kind of famous sum that, that doesn't add up to a finite number. It kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and... Um, uh, if you want to make it bigger than 37, you add up more and more terms. Cool. Okay. Um, it's actually slightly hard to prove that. It's not enough to say, well, we're adding up infinitely many things, so it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and never settle down. Because remember, over here, in this nice geometric series we were looking at, well, over there, we're adding up infinitely many things, and that settles down quite nicely. That's, that sort of turns out to be number two. Uh, so that's quite well behaved. Um, it's also not enough to say the terms are getting smaller so it kind of feels like maybe because the terms are getting smaller then it all, you know, we can throw away the leftover ones at the end that, that doesn't work either um, and isn't actually the right conclusion let me tell you about this series just because I think there's probably some people watching who haven't seen this before and even if there's only a couple of people who haven't seen this before I want the chance to be the person to tell you about this um, here's what you can do with this sum uh, stalling for time while I try and remember. Um, you can group the terms together. Let's write out some more of the terms. Oh, hello. Um, so let's write out more terms. One, half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, and maybe I'll stop there. No, I'll do a few more. Nine, a tenth, eleven, twelve. Oh, if I take too long writing this, someone will put it in chat. Oh, I don't want to put it in chat before I finish proving it. Oh no. Okay, right. A bunch of terms. Here's the idea to prove that this gets as big as you want it to be. Maybe I want this to be, uh, maybe I want to take enough terms to make this bigger than 37 or something. Um, here's the idea. Um, if you pair together these terms, so this is one third and one quarter. Well, one third plus one quarter is kind of big in some sense. I mean, they're small numbers, but if you add these together, that's bigger than one quarter plus a quarter, which is one half. Okay. Um, so these first four terms, I haven't quite, I don't want to mess around with the fractions, um, but if I add them up, then I get more than one and a half and another half. Cool. Oh, someone in chat says I want a factor of four. Yeah, not four, not, yeah, okay. Thank you. I wanted a four all along. If you've been shouting at your screen that it was four, not one quarter, I can't do with fractions. Right, okay. <laughs> Good times. Um, still a multiple of this, this series adding things together over here. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to look at these four terms. So I've got a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and an eighth. And all of these terms are bigger than, or equal to, I suppose, one over eight. So this bit of the sum is bigger than 1 8th plus 1 8th plus 1 8th plus 1 8th, which is 1 half. Okay, so that's quite, that's quite nice. Um, so we've found, a, found another half. So it was 1 and a half, and then it was a bit bigger than 2, and now it's a bit bigger than 2 and a half. So it's getting bigger. It's bigger, already bigger than the geometric series we looked at before. Um, next I'd like to, like to look at all of these terms. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so I'm taking more and more terms, but there's infinitely many terms in this series, so I can take lots of them if I want to. Um, this is bigger than 1 16th plus 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 1 16th. 
which is 8 over 16, um, which is 1 half. Maybe you've seen where I'm going with this, because the sum is now, looking at all of these terms we've had so far, bigger than 1 and a half and 3 more halves. It's all bigger than 3 now. Um, and I can keep doing this. I can keep doing this to take more and more terms um, so that uh, eventually I get to uh, I get to a sum that's bigger than anything I want it to be. It doesn't settle down. It doesn't turn out to be pi or something nice. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it keeps without bound is what we say, um, which is another way of saying it diverges. Diverges means um, that there isn't a bound on this sum. Um, okay, so that's kind of a different character entirely to this kind of nice pleasant geometric series that we had over here. Um, this series has got a name. Um, this series is called the harmonic series. And you might be looking at this and thinking, goodness, harmonics? Like music? Like harmony? I was bad enough when you said the previous one had something to do with geometry, but this one's got apparently something to do with harmony. It's just getting weird now, the way we name things. Um, okay. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, so, this way of doing things, if you play, let's close the loop back around to the original question, uh, you can keep doing this forever. So while the previous thought experiment of this video, but every time it finishes it gets twice as fast and starts again, while that would result in just two hours of entertainment, if instead your plan is to play this video back, very slightly increasing the playback speed in uh, these incremental steps each time, then that'll keep you entertained forever. Um, even though the video gets really, really fast, um, the total sum of the time that you would spend watching it uh, would keep going, keep you busy for all the rest of lockdown and onwards. Yeah, so I think it's harmonic uh, anonymous in chat, uh, harmonics, something about harmonics to do with these kind of nice fractions play some role in music theory. Maybe we should talk about it on the live stream at some point. Um, I'd have to learn some music theory if we were going to talk about it on the live stream. Okay, so there's kind of two different views of this playing YouTube uh, videos quickly um, phenomena. Um, there are two quite important sums actually. This idea of a geometric series, which very nicely behaved, converges. Uh, and this idea over here of a uh, harmonic series, quite badly behaved actually. Um, although the terms are getting smaller, adding them up um, gets really big. This is the reciprocals of an arithmetic series. Um, as a homework problem, I suppose, is so we know about we know about geometric series. We know about these for other common ratios. There's just some similar maths you do. Um, I suppose a homework problem could be um, something like uh, does the sum, so if I do this in general, does the sum of the reciprocals of any arithmetic series, oh, can't spell, um, so that would be a, a plus d, a plus 2d, and so on. Does the sum of reciprocals of that arithmetic series converge, diverge, it depends. So it feels like if I change the value of d, the common difference, then it feels kind of similar to what we were doing here. It sort of feels like pulling out a factor of d. But if I start at a different value, maybe a value that's not a multiple of d, does that change things? Um, so this is the sort of question that we asked to our undergrads. I've, I've phrased it in kind of scary grown-up language, but what I really want to know is, if I take a different arithmetic series, maybe like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 or something, the, the sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers, uh, so e.g. 1 plus 1 third, 1 fifth, 1 seventh, 1 ninth, 1 eleventh, um, does that converge? If so, is it something like pi? It could be something nice, right, like pi squared over 6 or something. Brilliant. Um, or does it diverge? Does it get as big as you like if you take enough terms? Okay, right. Um, I guess that's a homework question. That's a homework question that is 
Worryingly, maybe I shouldn't come up with homework questions on the spot. Um, worryingly, this homework question is quite similar to a question we might ask our um, might ask our undergraduate students um, if they're doing uh, a course on the maths degree, like some sort of analysis. In fact, I think we might set questions like this in first year analysis courses at university. So year 11s maybe sit this one out for a bit. I don't know, it's quite similar to what we were just doing. Who knows? Right, okay, there's a homework problem. Right, okay, um, let's catch up with chat. Um, what's the best way to do this? Um, I think if I do this and I go, let's put chat on the big screen. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, minor technical thing here. How do I get chat to a... Oh yeah, chat to a full screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, is that is that good? Um, ah, so then I want to do this. Does this work? <coughs> and switch to showing top chat. That's all right, isn't it? It's not not great. It's not very well, not very well built. Okay. Um, Top questions out of 331 questions. We've got 10 minutes here at the end. I've given you some homework. You need some other stuff to think about. Um, I'll read them off the screen because I can see this is way too small. Uh, I've passed 250 viewers. Have I really? Oh, do we have 250 concurrence? That's loads. Yeah, we did. Just we just got 250 concurrence, um, and our channel has got over over uh, 1,024 subscribers, which is nice. Um, I don't know why people have subscribed. If you've subscribed, then you'll, I suppose, get notifications about upcoming live stream videos. They're every Thursday at 16.30. Um, and you might see some other stuff we upload. Um, so we might upload other videos unrelated to this project. It's kind of a second channel where we dump lots of other stuff. Okay, uh, oh, recent questions. Would a successful applicant be able to do promise questions in year 11? I can do like the first two, but then it gets hard. Um, that's a fair point. The promise questions are supposed to be hard. Um, so for people who weren't here last week, um, I did an advert for Promise Europe, uh, which is mentioned in this question here, um, below me, not on the screen. Um, promise Europe is a summer camp for doing interesting uh, pure maths questions um, in number theory. Um, it's for people in Europe, um, quite loosely defined in Europe, um, in Europe or near Europe, I suppose. Um, who uh, wants to do some number theory and it's they set some questions when are we doing number theory we did a tiny bit of number theory last week um, okay cool your school emailed us about this stream right okay um, tell your school that I'm sorry for all the memes I'm not sure if they're expecting memes um, okay uh, less way in GCC we kind of talked about this um, da, 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 da. next year oh this is next year um, less way on GCC and predicted area levels because your GCSEs and A levels have been a bit messed up um, I think we're going to have to wait and see what data we actually get from people, um, but it's worth saying we know that um, we know that uh, we know that GCSE GCSEs you didn't get to do exams last year, and that might not be the best measure of your ability. Um, but there again, GCSEs were already not quite in uh, just the things that we're interested in, right? We we're really interested in maths for maths admissions. And probably only one of your GCSEs was in maths. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 please don't compare. Okay. This, 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 the problem with sorting by top is we get the ones that are oldest as well. Um, uh, Zeno's telemarathon. Wow. Um, year 11s represent. You've got three thumbs up. Okay. Right. Cool. So some year 11s are in here. Uh, level exam things. Cool. Okay. So we, I might have mentioned A levels at some point, which is what people in the UK do in year 12 and 13. Um, I checked on our YouTube channel the most uh, popular countries other than the UK for watching these videos are Morocco and Turkey and India. So shout out to Morocco, Turkey and India. Um, other countries need to get need to get the uh, need to get the views up. Um, there is an unofficial Discord which is not endorsed by Oxford. That's true. Um, it is unofficial and not endorsed by Oxford. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Anything else I need to talk about? Um, yeah, mean very little in a grade where candidates. I wouldn't go far. I wouldn't go as far as mean very little in a year where candidates did not actually take take exams. Remember these the grades that you get um, through this process that we're doing through coronavirus. They count. They're they're real grades. Um, so if you get an A level, if you got an A level last year, or if you get an A level this year without exams, they, they still count as A levels. Um, still looking at those. Raphael's representing Year 11s as well. Cool. Um, 
Uh, GCSE further maths. I can't remember what that's in response to. Um, right, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Divergent was a movie. Oh, I should have got the reference in. Um, other maths related YouTube channels. Let's shout out Three Blue One Brown. Um, since I think there's a lot of fans of Three Blue One Brown in in chat, given how many people are pretending to be Grant Sanderson right now, you know who you are. Um, so shout out to Three Blue One Brown. I don't think Three Blue One Brown needs us to shout them out. Um, I'm also going to mention a couple of Oxford channels. Um, let's mention a couple of Oxford channels, just at random. Um, so Tom Rock's Maths is run by Tom Crawford, who's a tutor uh, in Oxford. Um, that's Tom Rock's Maths. Um, he does uh, kind of always number file style videos. In fact, he's been in a lot of number file videos looking at um, uh, different maths topics. That's Tom Rock's Maths. Um, and I also like uh, Maths Unboxed. I'm going to shout out. Beth doesn't know that I'm doing this. Um, maths Unboxed. Let's see if we can put a link to that. No, I'll put a link somewhere. Um, maths Unboxed is GCSE revision um, with Beth, who's one of our current students. Cool. Okay. Um, and on the recent question, somebody asks, oh, someone says they're year 13. Uh, somebody does a shout out for the Turkish people. Um, which colleges am I tutoring? Uh, it's complicated. I, I teach it for each, when each other colleges need me. And there's a link to Tom Rock's Maths. Cool, right, okay. Um, I think we're going to sort of... Let's see what I've missed out here as well. Um, are you going to be talking about group theory? I did not talk about group theory. Let's switch back to the shape and talk briefly, because I've got five minutes. Let's talk briefly about group theory. Five-minute intro to group theory? Three-minute intro to group theory. Um, how do I swap again? I put that there, and I do this button. That didn't really work having chat on screen, did it? Because it was too too small. Um, so group theory looks at these rotations that I was talking about. And I was talking about the rotations quite vaguely, this kind of idea of doing one rotation and then doing another one. Um, group theory um, is the study of, well, lots of things. But one example of a group is looking at the way these rotations behave when you do one rotation so here's one acceptable rotation, um, and then you do another one. Um, so maybe I'll do this one next. And so look at the kind of compound effect of those rotations, which might make it sound like a sort of geometry, but it turns out that once you abstract away all of the details about um, what the dodecahedron looks like and where the corners are, um, and you play with just the idea of, of how these rotations behave when you do one and then do another one, the kind of almost strange thing that comes out of that is that doing one rotation and then another turns out to behave a bit like multiplication, um, a bit like multiplying numbers together. It, in some ways, it's similar, and in some ways, it's not. Um, there's this kind of multiplication table you can draw for what happens when you do one rotation and then a different rotation. Um, normally, in group theory, we start with simpler shapes than dodecahedrons, which is what I've got on the table. Um, but uh, we start thinking about rotations of small shapes. But as well as thinking about ro as well as rotations of shapes, you can think about um, other operations or other um, objects that have some sort of relation like multiplication that behaves in a similar way to multiplication. And now I'm being really vague. Um, and group theory is the study about what you can say about systems like that in general without worrying about the details of what particular object you're interested in, whether it's rotations of this shape or shuffles of a pack of cards, um, group theory comes up with general results that you can say for all of those systems. Um, so it's super powerful. Um, it, the kind of headliner is that group theory helps us understand the universe by looking at uh, symmetries of the universe. But it's really hard to say that in a way that makes any sense whatsoever. I mean, as I've just said it, it sounds like rotating the universe, which is not really what I mean at all. Um, I guess because group theory looks at more than just rotations of shapes. We always start by showing you rotations of shapes, though, because shapes are cool. Right, okay. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up uh, the live stream there. Um, I'm going to hang out in chat as well. Thank you to Lauren and Christian if they're watching the live stream. Thanks, thanks to Lauren and Christian for monitoring chat, approving messages, and answering questions as well. Um, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to wrap up this, but stay in chat, um, and I will swap now to yeah. Okay, right. I have, remembering, I need to remember 
we had this last week as well. I need to remember how to turn the live stream off. Um, yeah, cool. Oh no, I need to show you this as well, don't I? Oh, I won't show you this. Oh, hang on, there we go. Um, there is a newsletter, I mentioned it before. Um, for further reading, oh no, okay. Could I show it as well? Put it on the screen and show it. There is a newsletter, there we go. There is a newsletter with further reading related to stuff today. I can see someone in chat asking about analysis already and asking about group theory. There's a newsletter with uh, further reading related to this stuff. It's free. Um, to sign up for it, I ask for some small details about who you are. I don't want your name or anything weird, um, but it lets me keep track a little bit of who's watching. For example, I found out there's loads of year 11s. Um, to sign up for the free newsletter with further reading, you can sign up at maths.ox.dk slash r slash club. Um, but I think I'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week uh, at the same time in 167 hours from now. Thanks, bye.